<laughs> so, good afternoon, everyone. I've been asked by a couple of uh, representatives who are running between two meetings just to give them a chance to try and get here to this meeting. So I'll call it together in just a couple of minutes. Are y'all running to other meetings as well? No, there are three or four meetings right now. And to the, those who are watching us, we just are in recess. I said adjourned optimistically, but we're in recess <laughs> right now until um, we go back in session at 2.30. But this is the time when the last minute type thing, we just have one more day in the session. And so you'll have a lot of meetings like this take place. So thank you. That was a good time, Adam Scott. <laughs> So, in the meantime, if you are not a member of this committee and not a bill presenter, um, please sign up on the sign-up sheet. That's the only way we can keep up with our COVID-19 check. So, um, if you're not on the committee, please um, sign up. Give us your blood type. Give us your hospital. Give us your... It goes on. So this is the um, proper time now to call the meeting to order. But before we begin, we have um, a colleague of ours who today lost her uh, father-in-law and then her husband also went to the hospital. So instead of just a general prayer, let's just have a moment of silence and positive thoughts going her way. Thank you. Thank you. So today we're considering just one bill and I have a committee report coming from Representative Barr, Chairman Barr. Yes, ma'am, uh, Resource Management Subcommittee uh, met earlier today to review one piece of legislation. The subcommittee heard from the bill authors and concerned members of the public and offered the following recommendation that SB 384 do pass on a vote of 5-4. Thank you. We have received that report. Um, it's now the proper time for uh, the bill presenter to present his bill. And let me get your microphone on. Okay. Um, th thank you, Madam Chair and, and members of the committee. It's an uh, honor to be able to bring uh, Senate Bill 384 to you. Um, and this is a, uh, what we call a Blackwater bill, but really it's, it's tailored. It's going to primarily affect the Satilla River and the Satilla River Basin. Let me just ta take a minute and tell you a little bit about um, Blackwaters. These rivers are characterized by high levels of, of carbon from the dissolved organic matter. Now, the water is dark, but it's not muddy. It's really very clear. If you were to dip a glass of water in it and hold it up, it would be a little lighter than a glass of tea. Um, so it's not, we're not talking about muddy rivers, but they are characterized by low levels of, of oxygen, lower oxygen levels, so they are a little more vulnerable to, to pollution and other contaminants um, that, that could impact their ability. Uh, also, they're characterized, they're usually in a, in a broad uh, flood plain, plain. Sometimes there may be a high sand ridge uh, along one of the banks, but generally they're, they're low. Uh, they're in, we have sandy soils, there's a very high water table, it's susceptible to flooding um, and other, um, uh, you know, issues dealing with higher, higher water. But they are very beautiful, and uh, in particular, the Satilla River is very beautiful, 
and unique. It's, uh, it's a very, very slow, winding river. Uh, there's, um, you have the cypress trees, um, mayhaw trees. People, I don't know if you've ever had mayhaw uh, jelly, but it's some of the best jelly that you've ever had, and, and people in our area like to get it and do that. A lot, lot of wildlife, a lot of other areas. People in, in South Georgia enjoy this river, but it's really a, a state treasure and a state gem and jewel. And people come from uh, Atlanta and all over our state to canoe and to, to hunt, to fish. Uh, the fishing is, is really good. In fact, the Satilla River is known for the red breast brim fishing there. And uh, they're just truly beautiful uh, wild fish, and, and people know about it, and they enjoy it and, and fish there. And the state has recognized this because we have invested uh, money in this river system. We've purchased lands in the lower parts of the river for uh, wildlife management areas. Uh, we have uh, invested in restoration of marsh at the mouth of this river through the noise cut project. We've invested millions of dollars because we recognize that this is uh, a, a value to our state. And it really is unique because there's no uh, major industry on this river. It doesn't have a lot of the issues and problems and risks that can be associated uh, that other rivers may have, including other Blackwater rivers. And it truly is a Georgia river because it does not share a border with Florida or any other, any other state. And so this bill is to protect this river system and it, and it, it would prevent the, the um, placement of landfills with, within three miles of the high water mark. Now, it is true that the genesis of this bill starts with a, uh, when, when a proposed landfill was proposed to be placed in the Waynesville Atkinson area uh, within uh, what would be, we would call the buffer of the river, the area that, that there would be great risk of, of water flowing through the wetlands. Like I said earlier, there's, this area is characterized by wetlands into the river system and affecting the river. Um, and so because of that, this, this bill was created and filed uh, to try to protect that, but really to protect the river from any further development of this. Uh, as I'm sure many of you have heard, there is litigation over this landfill, but this bill will not affect that because if rights are vested to the proposed developer of that landfill, this bill won't affect it. But if they're not vested, it will protect the river, and it will protect the river from future projects uh, such as this. And in fact, I submit to you um, any opposition to the bill on that grounds in my opinion, indicates an intention to further bring landfills to this area. And that's not right, um, in my opinion, in many opinion, and certainly in South Georgia, but also across the state. Because we, many people recognize that there are certain areas that are proper for landfills and certain areas that are not. An analogy that I've been using for this, is, this bill is this. You wouldn't take uh, your garbage can and line it, maybe double line it, triple line it, have air fresheners around it, and put it in your living room. You don't do that. There is a proper place for that, that garbage can. And it's in, a, in the closet, in the kitchen, or in some other out of the way place where it's not to be seen or smelled or, or affecting something that's beautiful in your house. And it's the same way uh, for the resources of our state. When you have something that is rare and unique like this, it is proper and it is right for uh, the legislature to address this and to provide protections. Because, as I said, they're, they're rare, they're not common, and they are worthy of our protection. So I'd be glad to answer any questions that the members may, may have. Thank you. And so um, our committee knows the process. If you have a question, just put your button, and then I'll try and keep up with you as we go along. I have been asked, Senator, to ask you a question. It's more a matter of clarification. Yes, ma'am. 
um, it was by somebody this morning, a representative, they thought that this bill could apply to black waters in their part of the state. But this bill, I believe, and according to the language I've read, is specifically drawn. So right. helping you will not help them. Is that correct? No, no ma'am. If we, you'll just right, speak I, more clearly to that. It, when, when we started working on this, I got with the e EPD, and they asked us to try to tailor it down. It, would, it only applies to blackwater rivers that originate in the coastal plain that do not share a um, border with any other state, and that knocks out the Satilla and the, Sw and the Suwannee and I believe the Oclockney River, because they go into Florida. Uh, did I say the Satilla? You I did. Meant the, I meant the Suwannee and the St. Mary's okay. River. I misspoke. Um, and then uh, they have to flow directly into the Atlantic Ocean and not into another river system. So then, so, Senator, to further clarify, this legislation is specifically and directly to your area of the state, Satilla River, even though the word Blackwater is being used. Right, the black, right. It's, it's, okay. It, it would, the way it's described, it would impact the Satilla River because of the geographical limitations to its application. Okay, thank you. I'm still looking to see if I have any questions. Oh. I forgot we had to raise hands. Okay, so um, Representative Drenner, state your name and district for us, and I don't know if you have a mic or not. You do, okay. I, I can go. Thank you. I don't, can't, it, there, it's working. Thank you, uh, Representative Drenner from District 85. Yes, Thank you, Senator, for bringing this bill. Uh, um, hold on a second, my, my mask caught my breath. I know this is your second bill uh, regarding this particular issue of landfills and coal combustion residue. We, we passed Senate Bill 123 uh, yesterday, I believe. Yes, ma'am. I'm just curious, Senator, did you look at the Southern Environmental Law Center report that was written uh, in August of 2019? You know, I've looked at I can't tell you off the top of my head. I've, I've reviewed a lot of materials on this, but maybe if, if you refresh my recollection, I could. It, it uh, was a letter uh, written to EPD regarding uh, closure of the, um, I know what the issue is, uh, closure, closure of the coal combustion residue uh, surface impoundments. I have some familiarity, but I, if, 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 um, but I may have looked at it, but I, it's not fresh in my memory. So, uh, Madam Chair, can, just one more question. Yes. Uh, my my point in asking you that question, Senator, was because. We, we have kind of worked around this whole issue of coal combustion residue all session long, having not really addressed the bigger question, and that is the lack of li requiring liners or removal for coal combustion residue on site. And right. so I'm just wondering that you've done an excellent job of, of trying to help us with this issue. Why didn't you take it one step further? Oh, wow, well. <laughs> <laughs> so are you asking I, for a lunch that, break that, right, that, about right, right now? That's right, I mean, I, I, I did what I thought I could do, and so. That's All right, thank you, Senator. Uh, we have number nine, if you'll state your name and um, district. Senator, I, I, my name's Tom Collin. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I was reading the, uh, thing on line 105 about litter and it's a probably a stupid question but it's a simple question I know years ago chair lady Smith had a bill that defined litter and we exempted uh, stuff like cotton blowing off a truck I just don't want Stephen Meeks getting in trouble as far as litter goes and I know we're not ever even talking about this I just want to make perfectly clear what we talking about here and not you know, cotton blowing off a truck or tobacco blowing off a truck or right. watermelons falling off a truck. And we exempted all that in the code section. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure we still aren't talking about that kind of stuff so Stephen will get well, fined I, for littering Mr. Represent, into I don't, the river. I, 
I don't know that there's anything that we can do to keep him out of trouble. I understand but, that too. I'm but, trying. I'm but trying. Um, and to answer your question, literature have the same meaning. Um, the the change that you're seeing in that bill, my understanding is, is not substantive, but it was really a cleanup of the language that was used in, on line 105. Yep. And so I don't, it, it's not changing the existing law. I don't know that I'm directly answering your question, but if your question is, does this change what's existing now? My understanding is that it does not. Okay. But legislative council did this to correct the language on those lines. And that was done in a few other places as well. And, and I'm the farthest thing from a lawyer in this building, and I'm trying to read the code section, and I haven't got to the exemptions yet, but I, that's, that's yes, sir. fine. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I see no other questions. So at the proper time, the chair will entertain a motion. With your mic. What if I motion do pass? I have a motion do pass and a second from, okay. This is the proper time for any further discussion. Yes, this would be where we would consider an amendment. Um, all right, okay. Um, Normally we do amendments that have a lot of detail to them in subcommittees. So if you'll just present your idea and then we'll, we'll carry our discussion from there. Okay, and, and uh, I'm number 11, ma'am. Okay. Oh, I just turned you off. Okay, you're back on. <laughs> okay, so Sherry Gilligan, uh, District 24. And as I mentioned in the subcommittee this morning, my goal is to get from a no to a yes. So for, for me and my comfort level, I would like to make it to where biomedical, which is defined um, on Could you give us the line, the, the, yeah. the area oh, of the bill you're referring I'm sorry, to? I'm looking in section two around 267 to 273. This area is what I'm looking at. And this is where we're talking about the municipal solid waste and disposal facility or any coal combustion residential landfill currently range, you know, not within three miles of the high water mark. My goal would be to say that no biomedical, which is defined on line 24, so no biomedical waste and no CCR, which is uh, defined on line 31, would be within three miles but a, uh, I guess you Do you have a printed copy that you could give the committee to I help them follow I the? I wish I did. I'm I, I was trying to get the language figured out, and it's hard for me to say. I want one mile for a normal thing, and then three miles for coal ash and, <laughs> and uh, biomedical. <laughs> That's as simple as I know how to make it. One mile for a municipal solid waste disposal facility, but not if they're taking biomedical or if they're taking CCR, then I want three miles for those. Do we have lay counsel with us? Yeah. We do. Um, could you address then, uh, going through the chair, the question to um, lay counsel? I ask, thank you. It's good to see you here, Mr. Higby. Even though you're hiding from us. <laughs> could. I'm not certain that our committee knows and understands exactly the amendment. So, okay. And um, well, Mr. I, Mr. Higby, if you could give us a legal way of looking at it, possibly. Yes, for example, where does it go and that type of thing. Um, I'm doing a little bit of a leeway here because we've not had much time for these discussions at this point in time, and the proper time would have been to bring the amendment to the subcommittee. Yes, and I, I apologize, ma'am. If I'm out of order, you can tell me so. Well, I'm deciding that, so let's hear from <laughs> let's hear from lay counsel. Madam Chair, I'm I'm, I'm struggling because line 267 speaks to types of landfills as opposed to types of waste. Um, and so I'm, 
I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to understand how to insert the concepts th in, in there. Thank you. You've helped me. And to um, Representative Gilligan, I want to thank you for bringing that, but your concept and the way you're proceeding with this, I'm going to rule as out of order, not germane to this to yes. this conversation. So is there any further discussion? Oh, we have a motion and a second. Wait, I, uh, okay. I have a motion and a second. Now it's the time for the ayes and the nays. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed, nay. Um, so the ayes, well, let's do this. L yes, the ayes have it. I, let me, all right, for the chairs, for the, because I know this is on a short time frame of putting this all together, I ask for, the chair determines she needs a roll call vote. So all those in favor, Signify by saying I raise your hands and give us time to count. No, I rule that out of order. Bill. Mm -hmm. All right, the nays. So the count for our committee is 12 aye and 6 nay. Mm -hmm. Senator, do you have your bill? Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. And, and now you get to jump through the rules hoops. Poop. Yes, ma'am. All right, do, thank you, sir. Do we know when that would uh, occur? Pardon me? Well, do you know when that they would be meeting? Or I have no idea. Meeting? There's paperwork you need to do. I'll do that. And, and um, my thank you to the committee for coming at the short notice and um, I wish I could promise you lunch, but um, that'll be tomorrow or the next day. Thank you.